with the latest Goodman and Hummel pod. And uh, we are pleased to bring on a, a guy that I know well that uh, is making his first podcast appearance in, I think, over two years of, of any kind. Not any podcast. I've been I'm pretty sure podcast. it's any podcast you have not been on in it's two, two years. years. Jeff Borzello, glad to be back to the podcast world. We welcome you. Uh, we know you're nervous, but we will hold Terrified. your hand. We will make sure you're okay. You really rattled me when you said this was live. I just, I immediately got rattled. I don't know how to, I don't know how to handle this right now, but I have heard you were talking on other podcasts about how excited you were for my, my return to the podcast world. I'm, I'm very excited. Uh, you were once, many people don't know this trivia question. You were once my intern. I was. I mean, without, you, without, without you, I'd be, I'd be a high school teacher in, in Maryland. So, I mean, you, you saved a lot of the nation's youth from, from my lessons and my teachings, and I'm glad for it. Thank you. Well, I, I did the same thing for Rob and in, in, in his career. <laughs> no, so. I, I don't think that's I don't think that's true. I don't think he'd be a teacher in Maryland without you. I think he'd, he I think be he'd be teacher, he'd probably be in the exact same spot without you. No, Rob would still be overseas. Rob <laughs> would be overseas right now. Jeff Jeff would claim that I would have probably played at like Maryland Eastern Shore <laughs> Fox Sports recruiting websites or whatever he was doing. Your your skill level was you know. When I first saw you, it might have been Maryland, IPFW, I think, probably more, more, more appropriately. It's just uh, all right, amazing, man. You, you just got done calling a uh, a barn burner, an absolute <laughs> barn burner, Rob. Um, Minnesota, Michigan State. I think everybody and their mother thought that Michigan State was going to come out after that last performance against Northwestern and beat the living daylights out of Richard Pitino in, in Minnesota. Yeah. But ultimately, you know what? Minnesota is the better team today. They're 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 more talented. They're they're put together well. They're older. Um, well, maybe not older because Josh Langford's still like thirty two. Um, <laughs> but but everybody else, they're they're older. They they had the best player on the court by far, Marcus Carr. And tonight, Liam Robbins was the second best player. Yeah, it wasn't even close. Um, I was surprised because I, I thought Michigan State at least did some good things against Wisconsin. You know, and Wisconsin the. They don't follow that up by losing the, to Maryland tonight, but I, I was surprised because usually with with Tom Izzo led groups, and this was the case when I played. This is the case when Mateen Cleese played. This is the case forever. Like usually after a loss, he rallies the troops. They crush the next team on the glass. Yep. They get out in transition. Like there's like pillars of what Michigan State has done over the last 25 years with him as the coach. They don't do any of this stuff. Like, they look like they're disinterested. Yeah. Their energy level is horrible. Offensively, you know, Coach Izzo went to a lot of pick and roll with Cassius. That's fine. But right now, I think you got to find a way to reinvent yourself because their, their offense is – How do you play, Rob? What, what do you – if you're Tom Izzo here, watch him. You've seen him a few times here. Um, how do you play? Because they don't have – they don't have a natural point guard. We've seen that. Foster Lawyer's not a – Frontline point guard. He's he, right. he, honestly, he's a good backup. That's what he is. And, and Rocket Watts, we've talked about him a little bit. How do you utilize? Because you have to, you you have to gear your offense around Rocket Watts to me. You have to tell Watts like, and, and Tom Izzo has tried to get him to be more of a pass first point guard. I don't think you should. Yeah. I think he's so messed up in the head off of thinking I have to pass. I have to like, dude, be yourself. Yeah. He needs to be Rocket Watts. And I think they need to they need to get more ball movement. It's so much just stagnated pick and roll, and like, dude, teams just load up, and they're daring guys to shoot. Like they're they're, they're daring Aaron Henry to shoot. Aaron Henry, I'm really concerned about because he from a you said it. You said it's confidence. You're he, worried about. I've seen it waver last yeah. year at times. You were like, man, he he could go the other way here. Now they they figured it out. It seemed like by the end of the year, but. This could get really bad. They, they need to really reassess some things. They need to just play hard. <laughs> like if Coach Izzo's coaching effort, that that's they have they have bigger problems in their offense. They can't guard anybody either. I mean, right. it was Carr tonight, Trice the other night, uh, Boo Booey a couple weeks ago. I mean, it's it's not just you know Cash's missing Cashers on the offensive end. Not that he was a great defender, but like they're getting torched by every guard they play against. And that's like even when Michigan State's had offensive issues in the past. You can kind of count on them to guard people and, and at least kind of stay in the game. I mean, in a couple of years ago, this game might have been, you know, 61-58 or something like that. They got blown out because they can't guard and they can't score. I mean, it's just 
I think we kind of got a little bit fooled by them when they beat Duke early and said, all right, you know, they're, they're going to kind of come out and, and you know, they're, they're going to miss cash. They're going to miss Tillman, but they, they went at Duke, obviously Duke probably not as good as we thought they were. And so it's pretty much just that a, a, a closer than expected win over Notre Dame that, you know, the 10 point win. And outside of that, they've, they haven't done anything. And so I, you know, I think that going into the season, we had expectations that they'd be, you know, they take a step back borderline top 20 team. And then it, we just, we, I, I mean, I, me personally, I bought into them off that win over Duke and I thought they would be suddenly a top five, top 10 team and trust in Izzo, that whole thing. And they're just, they're not that. And, and in a big 10 in a year like this, I mean, are they a top five, six, seven no, team? In the not big 10? not right no now. Way. They're like nine today. Yeah. I mean, seriously, you can make a case. They're not in the top eight right now. Now, again, this thing is going to go up, down, and around. Rob said, he's like, I heard you say, you know, you wouldn't be surprised if if, if the winner of the Big Ten is six losses. Um, you know, it's going to be all about, you know, timing a little bit of, of when you face certain teams that are maybe coming out of quarantines that have players out, whatnot, uh, health, and and really your schedule, to be honest, and how it's, how it's laid out. And if you've got this easy stretch at the end and you can withstand – some of the body blows early, um, I, you know, Wisconsin. Listen, I, I was talking to Dosta earlier today, and we were saying, like, Mark Turgeon, back in the hot seat, right? Like, he's going to be back in the hot seat here. They're, not, they're no good. The only team they're better at then is, is Penn State and Nebraska, and they go out and they beat Wisconsin and Madison. Like, what the hell is going on there? No, it's, it's all over the place. To finish on Michigan State, and then we'll get to, to Wisconsin and Maryland. I think at times for Tom Izzo, their best offense has been put it on the rim and let our beast – get it. Let our studs just dominate the game physically. Like, think about my freshman year. They played Raymar Morgan at the three, Goran Sutan at the four, and yep. Drew Namick at the five. And then they brought dudes like Marquise Gray and and Edong Eba. I mean, they had like, they had like six dudes who yeah. were – more physical, bigger, stronger than everybody else in the Big Ten. And they would just beat you up. And, and you know, there's nobody like Adrian Payne on this team where he's just going to go and physically dominate a game or, nope. or uh, Derek Nix or – I mean, think about how many – or even like a Xavier There's Tillman. no pros. It's Rob, Tillman. there's no pros. Like, I'm tired. The Aaron Henry is a first-round pick talk. I said it to Doster earlier today. I'm like, why? Where? How? I don't see it. I, I'm with you. He, he probably, I guess – I hate to say this about a kid, but you you probably should have left, like, because you do have you have serious flaws in your game, you know. Yeah, and no doubt. Go to the NBA <laughs> before they just. Now he's got more on his shoulders, and it's the more eyes are on him, and it's just that's not his that's not his game. I'm with you. I think they should just let Rocket Watts go. Yeah, let yeah. him let him go. Let him be the guy. I mean, trying let to stifle what he does. Like, you know, right. high volume, yep. whatever it is. Like he's gonna have some games where he's three for seventeen. You're mm -hmm. not gonna win those, but when he's on, just just let him attack. Yep. He's the one guy that, I mean, if you give him the ball, he can beat his, his guy off the bounce. He can get to the rim. He can make shots. Just let him go, and, and everyone else can play off of him. Trying to make him a pass-first guy is just – it's it's not working. And, and, I mean, and I think, you know, a lot of us knew it probably wouldn't, wasn't going to work to kind of change the game that he's played his entire life and, and kind of fill the shoes of Cassius Winston. It was it was uh, kind of a amazing. recipe for disaster. It's amazing that, that these schools like Michigan State didn't have a succession plan, and we're going to – we're going to talk in a little bit about succession plans, but how do you not have a succession a good plan? Good tease, by the way. That's nice. It's a great tease. Great I'm tease. I'm impressed. That's your right? bet. Pretty good. How do you not have one for Cassius Winston? Seriously, how do you not have a guy ready to go as a, a, a better point guard than Rocket Watts, who's not one, or Foster Lawyer, who frankly just isn't good enough, and he's not really a point guard either, to be honest. No, he's a two. I mean, I, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that It's question. the smallest two guard in the history of high major I think, basketball. I think if I did, I'd be coaching a college basketball team, but I, I don't know why they don't have a point guard. Um, all right, Wisconsin. Borzell, are you, you concerned or not really? Do you just feel like, you know what, they're going to be what they are anyway. They're going to lose these games. They'll win enough because of their experience, because of their balance. Uh, they just weren't – honestly, Maryland just out-toughed them in the second half. I know, Rob, you didn't really see the second half at all, but – they just brought it to them, and they dominated in the glass. They played harder. They played tougher, and Wisconsin wasn't getting easy shots. Yeah, I mean, I think Wisconsin – like, uh, the, the one thing I am concerned about is Nate Reavers. 
Um, because he's just the past, I think, six, seven games, he's just disappeared. Um, and, and I think, you know, toward the end of last year, when they got it going, it was him and, and, and Potter on the inside. Both can play outside, they can play around the rim. And that was just, it was really hard to guard for a lot of teams. And and now he's struggling. And, you know, I don't know what it is, but he's not making shots. Uh, he had eight points today, um, which, you know, surprisingly, I think is maybe his most in the last three or four weeks. And so he's the one thing I'm concerned about. I'm not all that concerned with them. I do think that that today, if you ask me to pick who's going to win the Big Ten, I still might pick them. Um, it's just they were never going to be as good as they were for the final month last year. But in in a in the way the Big Ten is right now, I, I still think with their experience, the way they make shots. I mean, we saw against against Louisville, if they're making shots, they you know they can run anyone out of the gym. Yeah. Um, and so I I still think they're fine, and, and they still might be the best team in the league. I just I think Reavers has to turn it around. I'm still highly unsure on them. You know, <laughs> you always were. Listen, I, Rob was always like, I, I ranked him like number seven or eight in the preseason. And Rob looks at me, he's like, what are you doing? And I'm, I'm like, just look at the roster and what they did the second half of last year. Like they're old. Because it's burned into my brain, them getting killed at Mackey to a, an average Purdue team. And it's like, all Rob remembers. No, the no, games no. at Mackey. Well, games where I was like, they're not good last yeah. year. And they, they weren't. Were like, so I... They're going to lose games like this, but they're also going to find ways to beat people when you're like, there's no way. Like, I would have never thought they'd beat Michigan State after Michigan State loses a game like they do. And they, they've got some, like, Demetri Trice has been around the block, and so's Brad Davis, and those guys are experienced. So I think your point, as much as I hate to give you credit for this, is very valid at the start of the year where you're like, experience is going to win. And even yeah, though it's proven out with everybody almost. No, so I know. Far. And even though they're maybe not the most talented team in the Big Ten, because of that, because of their experience, they 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 are the favorite, and that's that's definitely me eating crow from. Uh... It, it, listen, it's not over yet. It's a long season, but I I do think yeah, don't give him his credit team. before he deserves it. No need right. for that. Yeah, exactly. You, you you don't want to eat any crow yet. You want to at least make sure that um, what I say actually comes to fruition. All right, listen. I told you guys to do a little homework. Uh, hopefully, you did it. Uh, I told you on the second part of this, I'm going to expose your asses if you didn't do it well, which is uh, succession plans for Duke, Carolina, Syracuse, Arizona, Kansas, Kentucky. We're going to get to those in a little bit. Uh, first, we are going to get to our month, you know, early season awards, whatever you want to call it. It's them. kind of mid-season-ish. This it is, is mid kind of mid-season-ish because we're – we're through basically the non-conference for everybody yeah. now. You might have one here or there, a one-off, but for the most part, you're right. Like we're we're mid-season, even though some teams haven't played a game uh, like Fordham, like Merrimack. I think Fordham starts tomorrow or Wednesday, don't they? Big, big day, big yes. day. <laughs> that means I need to uh, tweet out the Jeff Newbauer picture. Yes, that's and why I was running it. That's why I was running it. The Bauer. Um, have you seen the picture yet, Rob? I'm not. No, you'll you'll oh, see man. it tomorrow. Trust me, it's worth the wait. I can. You've never seen anybody coach in practice like Jeff Newbar, correct, Borzella? Yeah, that's probably true. <laughs> probably true. true. I think that's fair it to say. It's true. Trust me. When you see it, you'll text me and be like, "What the f?" <laughs> um, anyway, all right. So let's start with it with an easy one. Since we're talking about Michigan State being disappointing, and they have been, no question. Um, who's the most disappointing team? Uh, in the country, is it clearly Kentucky? Like, is anybody else in the discussion? Because I would say this. Yes, Kentucky, based on where we all had them ranked, and I had them at 10, which is actually lower than most, but I still had them way too high. Um, they've they've underachieved, certainly, pertaining to their talent and, and their, their rankings. But ultimately, they didn't have much of a preseason for a team that was They're one in six. I know they stink. I get it. They I mean, it's, it's not I'm even. It's, be they nice. They're clearly I'm the most to, disappointing I'm team in the country. It's it's not even. It's not even a conversation. All right, all right. They're one in six. Like I had them number five in my preseason power rankings. That's it's probably too high. And I did take a kind of a victory lap after their win over Moorhead State. I thought they looked awesome. <laughs> they they I have been looking. It was like a victory hundred yard hundred yard dash or hundred hundred meter sprint. It was but, ten feet. You got ten feet. They looked awesome. All right. I'm. I was sticking to that. They were going to win the title after one game. No, I mean, it's. I don't think it's close. I mean, right, it's, second. forget. Okay, we're, we're um, all in agreement. Kentucky is number one, clearly most disappointing. 
Who's number two? What about Memphis? I, that's that's a solid choice. It's valid. It's valid. I think I mean, it's up there, and I think Alabama could be put in there too. Yeah, I put him way too high. Everybody rips on me for that. I one. told you. I told you the past two years, you put him like 14 in the preseason. I'm both done. years. I'm done with it's Alabama done. in the preseason. The Bama forever. believer. He's trying to turn football school down there. Yeah, forever. I, I would say Arizona State's got to be in there. Yeah. You know, what that about Virginia, UTEP? Did either of you say Virginia? Yeah, I mean, listen, yeah, Virginia's got to be in there too. They've they beaten nobody. I, I mean, mean, they were the not. ACC preseason favorite. I mean, right. they, you know, I still think they're good, but yeah, you know, they just they lost to they lost to San Francisco. I mean, they just they haven't looked. And after the first game, when when Hauser was hitting shots and they were hitting all these threes, it was like, okay, this is a new era of Tony Bennett Virginia basketball on the offensive end, and it's it's not. You know, it's just, I mean, they're more skilled maybe than they have been in the past in terms of their front court guys, but they still have issues scoring the ball. And, and they're not as good know, defensively. It's it's pretty much the same pieces as last year that kind of struggled for two thirds of the season, plus Hauser now. And Hauser, right. Jay really Hoff. good there. Right. right. Jay Hoff's not all of a sudden going to turn into some right. ACC player. He's a good player, good, solid player. And Hauser's a good player, but neither Hauser has, has set the world on fire yet. Uh, they're both solid pieces, ultimately, which is really what they were behind Mark, Marcus Howard. Um, so, all right. So, uh, I, I'm giving my vote to – who's number two? I'm giving it to Michigan State, I think. I am going to give it to Michigan State as my number two behind Kentucky. The losses that they've had. Like, right. the 20-point Northwestern, the 30-piece tonight. Yeah. Like, that is highly disappointing. I, I'd go Michigan State as well. I might, go, I might go Memphis. I mean, I had them – I mean, I don't think they were – picked as high as Michigan State, but I mean, they just, I, I could see Michigan State turning around. I could see Virginia and Duke and Arizona State turning it around. I don't know about Memphis. They've they have looked like legitimately bad. In, in, I've got the Tigers tomorrow night. Oof. Do you? They're yeah. probably, probably going to win by 40 now. I'm going to look like an idiot, but. USF Memphis, here we come. Big game. Yeah. Big, big game. Uh, all right, so flip side. We're probably all going to agree on this and, and and be searching for a second team. Well, I've got two well. answers, so I'm going to go whatever one you guys don't go with. All right, well, mine's easy. I mean, the, the, the biggest surprise to me has to be Chris Collins in the Northwestern Wildcats. What about that Missouri? Was, ah, that's a good one. Good call, Borzella. Look at you doing your I homework. I was all over it. I, I told you I did my homework. I You've had two homework. years to prepare for this, so, yeah, you, <laughs> yeah. you're doing well. Yeah. I'll, go, I'll go Clemson, 6-1. It's and good. That's good. I like it. I like it. All right, so uh, – Borzello with a little surprise with Mizzou. Uh, I got Northwestern. Rob's got Clemson. All right, of those three, which one has a chance to actually uh, win a game or two in the NCAA tournament or get to the tournament? How about that? We, let, let's start with get to the tournament. I mean, get to the tournament, I think Northwestern's got a real shot. I mean, they have three good wins already in the Big Ten. And the thing about the Big Ten is that pretty much every game they play is going to be another chance for a good win. Now, they could lose the flip like side, the flip side is they could, they could lose 10 in a row. Yeah, right. exactly. Missouri, but, I like your Missouri pick for that because the SEC stinks. They've already done their work. They've already yeah. done their work in the non-conference. They're right. not going to bottom out in a crappy SEC. They're not. I mean, they they, they needed like a last-second bucket to beat Bradley. So, I don't, know if, I don't know if they're the SEC favorite just yet. But, yeah. I mean, they, like they're probably the – Second best team in the SEC, if you if second or third. I mean, yeah. Tennessee is the best, but it's them and maybe Arkansas right next. Florida, yeah, right. No, they're listen. Without Keontae Johnson, and, and I, I feel horrible saying this, Rob, and I've touched on this a little bit, but tried to stay away from it because obviously his health and and hopefully recovery is the primary concern. Uh, but without Keontae Johnson, Florida is just another team. They're not. They're probably not even a tournament team, to be honest. You know, I mean, listen, he, he was their best player, SEC player of the year candidate, probably the front runner and, and a first round pick. You take that off a Florida team that struggled last year um, and, and didn't add a ton. I think I, the emotion, I, the emotion of it is going to be a is going to be a factor. Too. Too. I mean, that's yeah, it's going to be so hard for them to play. Yep. Absolutely. So All right. Player of the year. Uh, another fairly easy one. I think we go uh, Luca, unless you can convince me that somebody uh, else. Um, I don't know. Came. I will make. I'll make no attempt to convince you of anybody else. Rob. Rob's gonna. Rob's looking like he might try. No, there's nobody else. It's gotta nobody be else. It's right. Player done. of the year. We got a clean sweep for Luca. All right. All American teams. I'm not gonna go first on this one. I'm. I'm gonna defer 
uh, to to uh, the youngest person in the pod. Um, believe it or not, that's you, Rob. Okay. I'm going Luca. <laughs> I'm going DeSumo. Yep. I've got Jared Butler. Yep. I've got a toss-up between Drew Timmy and Corey Kispert. I'm going to go Timmy. Okay. I'm going to go Jeremiah Robinson Earl. That, so that was the exact five I had when I did it this morning. I had those yeah. same five. If I had to make one change, I might go Marcus Carr over Robinson Earl. I yes. mean, Carr's been awesome. He was awesome tonight. Um, you know, he's I don't know. He's been, he's been spectacular. So if I, if I wanted to just go a little bit of a tweak, I guess I would go him over Robinson Earl. He definitely deserves that type of love. Like second yeah. in scoring in the Big Ten, third nationally, first in assists in the Big Ten. He's awesome. He's really, really good. And, like, I think a few more games where they can beat some good people, he certainly moves into that conversation. So I had a combination of, of both you guys. I went Luca, Io, Jerry Butler, Kispert, and Carr. No Timmy? I went Kispert because he's oh. a veteran. That's oh. why. Honestly, <laughs> a veteran? I just the intangibles, the veteran, um, I don't know. I just felt like, you know what, it's splitting hairs. And you could have went Suggs, and I wouldn't have got mad at you. Like, I think you could go any one of the three, and I wanted to put two of them on there. Kis Kispert only had eight points tonight against Northern Arizona. I think that's a – disqualifies him. I what think he's they out. Win by? They won by 30. Timmy had 14 and six, so he gets the edge. It's I over. The cover. Listen, I'll take him in the best bets tomorrow morning to cover. 40, whatever it is. Four, it'll be 38. Who are they playing tomorrow? The same team, twice. I think Northern oh, Arizona. Back back. I think they got back-to-back. Nice. So, um, all right. So we agree. Basically, the top, you know, Luca, Ayu, Io, and, and and Butler are in, and then whether it's Kispert or Timmy, Carr or Jeremiah Robinson Earl, anybody else that you guys thought long and hard about. Put I, I've thought about Suggs. I've thought about Ron Harper Jr. a little bit. Yeah, right. I mean he's he's been terrific. I mean, there's the problem with him is there's. There's already three guys in the from the Big Ten that we've met, that we've mentioned. Yeah. So yeah. you know, at yeah. best, he's he's the fourth best player in the Big Ten right now. Um, but he's been terrific. Um, you know, he's like he's he's their kind of legitimate star that they needed um, to kind of maybe take the next step this season as opposed to last season. He's been awesome. So I, I think he's probably a second teamer right now if we're if we're going to pick ten. Um, Anybody else? Cade. Mm. Not eh. quite second team. Third team. I wanted. I honestly wanted to put Marcus Carr in there, but I thought I'd get crushed for putting three Big Ten guys. So I just, <laughs> well, I did it for you. So I, I, I'm not a Big Ten homer like you are. So they won't. They won't crush me. They will not crush me. Uh, all right. Um, let's move on. Did we? Wait, wait, else? wait. Hold on. One, one more. Going yeah. into conference play. Yeah. Who would your Final Four be, and how, and is that different than your preseason? Uh, probably. I don't even remember my preseason. Um, mine was mine was Gonzaga to win it, Baylor, Villanova, Illinois, and I don't Baylor. I don't know if I would change that. I think that's I think I, I I think that's still okay. It's not bad. I mean, it's not bad. You're certainly not worried about it. I mean, who was your fourth team, Jeff? Illinois. Who was your third team then? Villanova. Oh, okay. I don't remember who I picked. Did we, did we pick? Did we do a mock final four? At the start? I don't remember. I did. I I had to. I just I just thought about it because I was like I was like, who would my fourth team be? And I was like, you know what? I guess I'd still take Illinois. I mean, I still think they're really good. Yeah. I think I probably – who would I have taken as my fourth? I might have taken like a, a – you you Did you take my, Kansas? Didn't you take Kansas? I think I did take Kansas just because – and then you've been, I, you've been going back and forth on Kansas all no, season. Like, you keep listen, saying no talent, no, final I four. I like Kansas. Can't okay. recruit. Are you going to be like a, a, a Jayhawk annoying fan too saying – I, I, I just said they don't – have the talent they've had in the past. Like Jalen Wilson is not a – maybe he will be a first-rounder. He's a pro. He's a pro. I don't he know if he's a first-rounder. But I'm not sure he's a first-rounder. I'm not sure Igbaji's a first-rounder. They, they might be this year. You know, they might sneak into the 20s. All I'm saying is overall, if you can name the final three guys, two guys on the bench for for, Can for Kansas right now, um, I, humble, humble, if you can name the final two – I'll buy you dinners for the next year. I already had them once this year. You uh, still can't name it, it's numbers twelve and thirteen on the bench. I can't name them. No, it's the one dude's brother, um, uh -oh. T Han. I might be in trouble here. It's T Han, Connor T Han's little brother, and 
No, there's two at the bottom. There's two scholarship guys at the bottom. One is, do you know these, Portel? Are you looking at? Are you looking at your computer screen? Uh, I'm looking it up right now. I don't. Latrell, I thought I was gonna get it. I got excited. Latrell Jussell. Yeah. Uh, one. I didn't know. The that. other one is Jethro Muscadin. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I remember him. You remember Haiti, oh. Haiti, Haiti native. I think he went to high school in like Louisville or something. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, like I, I just think, like, wait, what does the twelfth guy on the team have to do with them making the final? <laughs> yeah. like, doesn't. Is, I'm just what, saying their what, talent what, level has fallen. They're taking. Who's the who's who's twelfth guy in Gonzaga? Uh, I know that Martinez Arlauskas. <laughs> Who was the twelfth? He's not the twelfth. He was like the eighth man last year. He didn't no, drop he down. He didn't get off the bench last night. They won by hundred the other game. He didn't get off the bench. He's their twelfth man. <laughs> who who was the twelfth man? The 05 North Carolina champion. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying they can't go to the final four. Now, what I have said is I don't know if they can win six straight with Marcus Garrett as the point guard. I think they can win four. I don't think they can win six straight with Marcus Garrett as your point guard. Okay, I, I've said it. Rob Doster is going to clip that and, and tweet that to every single Kansas fan, and I'm going to get lit up again. But well, they, when I they win the national title, he's going to just tweet it out nonstop. He probably will. That's Mark a good point. Garrett, MOP of the Final Four. <laughs> right, gonna right cool. back. He's going to go on a Kem he's going to go on a Kemba Walker run and just yeah, that, that keep ain't going to happen over and over. That is not going to happen. Uh, listen, I'm with you, Gonzaga, Baylor, Villanova. Uh, Rob and I. Uh, listen, it's hard to disagree when you talk about any team other than Gonzaga and Baylor that has a chance to to win it all. I think you have to mention Villanova. I think those three yeah. are in a class by themselves, even though Villanova is not the number three ranked team in the country because of that that shock. Yeah, I have them five in my yeah. in my power rankings, but I mean, if you if you lined everyone up on a neutral court, I'd probably they'd be third. I mean, I think they're probably better than Kansas. They're Where do you find your Kansas power State. rankings, by the way, Jeffrey? Where? Yes. ESPN.com. It's a fairly popular website. Just go <laughs> to ES – never heard of it. ESPN.com. And then uh, every Monday morning, 7 a.m., they're up there. Wow. Weekly awards and power rankings, a little combo. Tony Moss must get up early to, to put those uh, the power rankings up, to get them edited. I mean, there's a lot of typos in that thing. It's like 3,500 3, words. I just it's, 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 flawless. it's flawless, yeah. though. It's a mammoth task for an editor to have flawless. to handle that. And but and the problem is on my Sundays have been occupied by fantasy football. So now that the fantasy football season's over, they're going to be the quality is going to be that much more improved. That's bullshit because you love soccer. It's all about El. That's, football. that's, a, that's, a, that's a Saturday Sunday morning thing. <laughs> the man. I, 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 I spend zero time with my one year old. I guess. What, what's your wait, wait? What was your fantasy football record this year? Of how many did you cut down to? Fourteen. And. Won one title, made a small profit because I had three three runners up. One of fourteen. I know. I made the playoffs in thirteen. Also, thirteen or fourteen made the playoffs. Only won one title. I love that you won a title, like you won a ring, like just like putting it out there that you. It's were all coaching. I mean, I picked up some guys, taught them the culture, and yeah. you know. Just it, wait, it, hey! Just wait till you see the tweets tomorrow that are going to go towards Kevin Nagandi because I, I won another title. That gives me two against him. There the last go. time I did this, Rob, I went on Sports Center, and he finished last, and I won it. So I handed him a plunger for the toilet bowl nice. on Sports Center. So I, I, I got to send him something. I usually send him something anyway. Uh, the last time I sent him was a shirt. I won't say what it said because uh, I can't. But he would never put it on and wear it. So he never paid up his his wager for the last one. The fantasy league that I play in is is. BS because if you win you get nothing, but if you get last you have to do some insane punishment. So this like, you, get, you get nothing for winning it. Nothing for winning. We've never paid out any like. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. I, I don't know why. Like everybody would be willing to do it, but we never. Who's the who's the who, who's the organizer? Who's the commission? Scott Martin is the commissioner. Oh, so we got to get on Scott Martin. He can't because he's he's a coach. So so we're playing by the rules here. But uh, I so what, what what's the rule? What what do you, what have you had to do? Has to caddy a round of golf, and and the, the champion can do whatever they want to him. Ooh, not <laughs> bad, not bad. It's funny stuff like that, but yeah, we don't play for anything, which kind of stinks. I'd make it a lot worse for the loser personally. It's like running, it's been like running stuff. Like it was a beer mile last year. It's like <laughs> like kills. Beer miles are tough. I've never done one because I'm terrified of it. Like it it looks brutal. 
making them chug a beer every yeah, lap. every lap. Yeah, is that what it is? Every lap, every lap, you got to chug a beer, run another lap. Like I'd die. Uh, yeah, you would die. Hundred like, percent. We did. Like, I don't think you, I don't think you could run a mile without a, like no beer involved. I don't know if you could run a mile. Yeah, I don't know. Hummel Hummel thinks he's going to kick my ass in a decathlon at the end what of the year. I think I ran the mile in as a, as a, as a junior in high school just for our decathlon. What do you think my mile time was? As a junior in high school or college? Sorry. Oh. Pre injuries. This is five thirty five thirty two. I am really upset that you disrespect me. Like that. Jeff, what's your guess? Five thirty. Uh, oh, oh, him. Five five oh five. Five oh five. Four forty three. I'm no. Goodman in the mile. In the the Whoa. It's holy over. shit. I could literally drink beer and eat pizza for three weeks straight <laughs> and still kick the shit out of Jeff. I have no doubts about that. Wow. But, but all I have to do, listen, all I have to do, Borzello, is, is somehow hit a 19 and a half inch vertical. If I can do that. I don't think you can. I've seen you play basketball. I mean, we shot around at Hoop Hall one time. That was embarrassing for you. Well, the shot might have been embarrassing that day, but you had off, very off limited lift feet, on your jumper. Off very two limited feet, lift. I can I still think I can graze the rim off two feet. So I don't know what that gives me as a vertical. You can't graze the rim. I'm telling you, I did it. Well, that was before I tore up my knee. But I, I'm telling you, I think I could still pull it off. I need I need heavy training this offseason. Didn't touch the rim at the 2005. <laughs> There's no way you could touch it now. I'm telling you, I did it like three years ago. No way. No shot. I did it in front of coaches three years ago. In, in Vegas? Vegas? Yeah. I was there. I hit it. Took a couple of couple of tries. The rim looked a little bit low. I hit it. It was, the, it was like one of the Bishop Gorman auxiliary rims. It was not. It was not 10 feet. It was not low. That was the Josh Jackson year when apples ran after me coming out of the stands. That's that's complete BS. All right. Let's get on to the fun stuff. All right. Succession plans. Uh, this is something, again, we didn't confer with each other at all. Zero. You made I sure. Hope, you made sure. No, I hope you didn't you didn't drop, you know, bounce us off some coaches. I bounced oh, it off nobody. Hours. No coaches? Bounced, no coaches. All right, good, good. Um, I can't wait to see Hummel's picks for some of these. This may not be my strength here. Like I'm dying. He's gonna, he's gonna put himself. He's gonna put himself at Kansas. It's gonna be. It's gonna be terrible. Right. Let's start with the Duke Blue Devils, and, and we. I I said two ways to do this. Okay, so there's two options. One is your swing for the fences guy, and then your your realistic pick. So you're the athletic director at Duke. You're Kevin White, and Coach K retires at the end of this season. Rob, who are you swinging for the fences to try to get? All right, this is kind of a weird answer, but I don't think that they have a swing for the fence guy because I think it, they limit, they're going to limit themselves to all Duke people. Okay. And when I look at that, like Mike Bray, he's not, he's not leaving Notre Dame at this point. Chris Collins, if he starts winning at a high level again, he could be a good choice. But for the last two years, no. Wojo at Marquette, Johnny Dawkins, Tommy Am like. I don't necessarily know if there is a swing for the fence guy. My actual like realistic hire, I went Bobby Hurley. That might be a totally stupid answer, but that, that's kind of what I kept coming back to. All right. Um, Borzella. So I agree that there's really no real swing for the fences guy. I do think they might lob a call. And, and I know this is going to be, this is this might be the swing for the fences guy for everyone, but I do think they would lob a call into Brad Stevens. I thought we weren't allowed to use him. You, we never said that. You <laughs> asked, we got no answer. <laughs> we got no answer. Um, so I think they would at least call him. Um, my hire, I think, would be Jeff Capel. Um, you know, I went through the same names that that uh, Robbie did, but I think the thing about Capel is that I think he's proven he can recruit the kind of caliber of players that Duke has kind of relied on the last whatever yep. decade yep. or so. And I think, I mean, I just think that if he gets there, he could probably recruit better than right now. I think he could recruit better than Wojo or Chris Collins or, or Amica or any of those guys. So I, I think I would go with him, but I mean, it kind of depends on, on when it happens. I mean, if you were do, to do it today, you might say, Hey, Chris Collins is going to get it. So I did, I kind of think it happened, you know, it depends how Wojo and Collins and Capel and Hurley and all those guys do over the next couple of years. All right, I got a good swing for the fences, guy. Oh, God, here we go. I do. I really do. What the hype? Surprised neither one of you came up with this one. Probably not going to get him. Um, and he was run out of college. There's your hint. 
Um, but he is a former Dukie, and he is a head coach in the NBA, and he's done a great job. Quinn Snyder. Quinn Snyder. <laughs> oh, that's a that's a bad answer. Why? <laughs> I like. I mean, I, I like that it's outside the box. I, I like that it's a swing for the fences. You had no swing for the fences, guys. I really want to recruit eighteen-year-olds when I can coach the, the Utah Jazz and make three million dollars a year. I'm not saying it, it. Listen, all I'll say is I've heard there's some friction. Yes, I got this really good answer. There's some <laughs> friction. There's a little friction going on in the in the Utah Jazz. Uh, Management, or you know, he can get another uh, NBA job. He, he can get another NBA job if he okay. got fired. He can. Again, I like the I like the idea. Though. I like the name. It's outside the box. It's like worth the call. You're probably not going to get him. You got a better chance of getting Quinn Snyder than you do Brad Stevens. Well, probably, sure. maybe. Right. I, don't, I don't know. Maybe. Anyway, all yeah. right. I go Quinn Snyder, and then one of you. You mentioned Borzello. One of Bobby Hurley or Chris Collins. Hurley, I think, would embrace it. That's the difference. I think he would actually say, you know what? I want this effing job. I'm going I'm to follow Coach K. I'm going to get it done. Um, where Chris he Collins is no he gets, part of it. He gets teed up too much. Yeah, but he'd fight. I mean, he'd fight. That's what they wanted, Duke. So uh, one of those two guys. All right, next up, uh, a really difficult one. You had a million choices at Duke. You know, all the guys that, you know, Tommy Amaker, Collins, Wojo, Capel, um, Hurley, you name it. At Carolina, there aren't many uh, keep it in the family options. Let's start first with the swing for the fences guy. Man, like I had a hard time with this one, a really hard time. Borzello, start us up. Carolina swing for the fences. Yeah, I I, I, I don't even know who it would be. I mean, I, I think that they could call – I mean, this is – it's again, it's totally ridiculous. I mean, they could call Tony Bennett or, or like just to, yep. just to just to say, hey, I mean, this is. I mean, I think he out of the ones that we're going to discuss, I think he would fit there the most. Yep. Um. So that would be my swing for the fences. Again, I don't think he takes it, but at least worth a call. If you had done this like eighteen months ago, I think Jerry Stackhouse would have been the the answer. Oh. I, eighteen months ago, oh. I said, I think <laughs> oh. I, I think it would have lined up for him to get it if he could have succeeded at Vanderbilt. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. But today, <laughs> not 18 months ago, I'm I, I'm struggling. I think I mean I think Wes Miller because I think he gets something better, you know, either this year or next year or something like that. Yep. And then that's like the stepping stone to Carolina when Roy leaves. Okay. I'm 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 with you there, Rob. What do you got? This is probably stupid. I, I've said <laughs> Swing for the fences. I said Jay Wright. There's no way he's going there, but I figured they'd probably call him. Maybe. It's worth a call. And realistic, this is where I'm afraid of your guys' response. I I said Hubert Davis. Just he's on my him. list. He's on my list. Like he can recruit. He's got a good personality. He played in the league. He played there. Like seems super introverted. I don't know him. I don't know him at all. And when you watched him on game day, he was like gregarious and funny and goofy and whatever. Like. I've walked by him. Maybe he just doesn't like me like so many others, but I've walked by him a hundred times. Like he won't even look at, like, it looks like he's almost like a, a big time introvert. So I, I just, I don't love that hire. I would go a hundred percent, just swing it like a Tony Bennett or a Jay Wright, either one. They're both going to yeah. say no. And then to me, the only, the options you got to look at are, are either Wes Miller or Jared Haas. Jared Haas yep. Those are the two. That if you're going to keep it in the family, you go with one of those two, depending on who's hot at the time. Yep. You yeah, know? those were the first two on my list. Yep, I, I think those are the those are the two. All right. Uh, next up, uh, Jim Beheim is uh, 76, I believe. Buddy Beheim still has uh, this year and one more left. Um, you know, I, Mike Hopkins should have had it, could have had it. Probably regrets not sticking around now because. Things aren't going great at Washington um, in the Pacific Northwest. Um, you want me to go first with this one? Yeah. Well, actually, if the Mike Hopkins, do you think that either side has any interest in 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 getting back together, rekindling the relationship? Yeah. Yeah. yeah probably. Yeah, I think both both should. Right. I, mean, I, I, should. I think both should for sure. I just I wasn't like, sure it was still on the table. Yeah, I, I think you know Wild Hack is is uh, the AD there uh, now. He's pretty close to the vest, but I know he's very close with Hop, very close with Bayheim, a Syracuse alum. 
So I, I think he'd look at Hop. Um, but again, it's hard to hire Hop right now based on what he's done the last year and a half at, at Washington. It's been pretty ugly. So, um, all right, uh, I'm going to give you mine. Ready? My swing for the fences isn't really a swing for the fences because they could get him. None other. Oh, I, I wonder if it's the same guy I have. Rick Patino. Oh, God, no. Rick Patino. <laughs> he's boys with Bay. They're close, okay? He's he's much younger, much younger, like seven years. He's only 68, I believe. You can get him in a heartbeat, and he'll be motivated, and damn it, he's the best X's and O's guy in, in, in college hoops. You're going to replace uh, get- 73-year-old Jim Beheim with 68-year-old Rick Pitino. 75, I think. I think he's Whatever. 75. That's still like, I mean, come on. Much younger. It's like going from me to you, Rob. Seven years? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> um, all right. That's my that's my pick. You can mock it all you want. But Rick Pitino, you both know people in the league would be scared shitless to see Rick Pitino again if they saw him at Syracuse. They would oh, whoever you're gonna bring up, whoever you're gonna bring up for Syracuse, my guy is a better coach. Period. All right. Anyway, then my my other one. The, the, the safe one, you could go Hop, you could go Jerry McNamara. I'm going to go Kevin Willard. I'm going to go Kevin Willard. Northeast guy, done a great job at, at Seton Hall. Again, has some ties through Patino to Bayheim. Um, although I don't think they're buddies. Because he, was on my, he was on my list as a, a phone as a... call. They're not boys anymore because of a phone call with, I think, right? Yeah. Anyway, I'm not going to go into the phone call. Uh, all right, Borzella, what do you got? So I had Willard and Ed Cooley as my not swing for the fences, but like I think that uh, hey, maybe both would take. I don't know. I think both would be really good there. Um, I'll say Cooley just because you already used Willard, yep. um, and I think my pick would be Adrian Autry. I think they would. I think they would just. They would. I mean, Hop was the coach in waiting. I don't think he would get it. So I think they just go down to the next one. I think that's Adrian Autry. He's been his right-hand man for, for a while, and I think that'd be my pick. I'm going to start playing this game like Jeff does. So I think that my swing for the fences is going to be Greg Popovich. <laughs> and he's a really good coach. And he's probably better than Rick Pitino. He's, he's maybe better than Rick Pitino. So, I yeah, whatever you said about that. And <laughs> my realistic – I had Kevin Willard, but since you already used him, I'll go Nate Oates. Because he was at Buffalo. Right. But yeah, Pop right. the swing for the fence one. You so, know, Bayheim, I think Bayheim hates Nate Oates right now because he went after his boy K. Yeah. So I, I don't I don't know if Bayheim would sign off on that one. But that, there's a semantics. You know, who who knows if he'll he'll be able to uh make the call anyway. All right, so uh we're through three of them. Uh we got three left. Um the young guys, the young, the young trio. We've gone through the the elders, uh, the elder statesmen. Now we're up to Kansas, and if Bill Self survives this thing, um, I think he'll survive. I, I think if he gets a one year postseason ban, they keep him. I think it's going to take more than that uh, for them to, to to fire Bill Self. But let's say he does get fired, um, Rob. If you have anybody other than this guy as your swing for the fences guy, I'll be disappointed. So we're gonna let you go first, so I can mock you if you fuck. Okay. Uh, screw it up. Screw it up. I, I didn't really. I don't know. I I should swing for the fences, Chris Mack. Maybe not. No. You got the first name right. Yeah, you got the first name right. That was realistic, Chris Beard. Yeah, we. I would say swing for the fences, but that could be realistic depending on what the penalty is. Like, like if if self goes to the NBA and they don't have a postseason ban, then it's realistic. If there's a two-year postseason ban, I don't see there's any way that – I'd be shocked if Chris Beard goes somewhere with everything he's gone through in his career to get to where he is, getting the type of guys he's getting in Lubbock, that he would take two years off his career that he can't play in an NCAA tournament at Kansas, even though it is Kansas. Sure. Borzella? Um, so Beard was my swing for the fences guy. Yeah. Um, and I didn't really put that much thought into like a realistic because I do think if it's only one year or something, I think Beard would take it yep. or at least really, really think about it. Let's say uh, it's two. A couple, Let's a couple it's a two of two year ban. Two year ban. Yep. Two two dark horse type guys. One would be Brad Underwood. 
Okay. If you want to dip back into the Illinois kind of pipeline that, that led you to self. Yep. And the extreme dark horse, dark horse would be Jock Vaughn. Yeah, I had him listed. I had there Jock you go. listed. I, I, I don't mean, know if I love it. I mean, I mean it's, it's, it's outside the box a little bit. So I, I think that, you know, he'd at least be on their list. So somebody in the chat, on my guy, Painter. And it's it's homeless guy too, and oh. and that's Matt Painter, which yeah. would, would absolutely destroy poor Robbie for life if Matt Painter left for Kansas. Uh, that would be that would be upsetting to me. I I would not blame him, but I would I would be sad. That How much sad. would you pay? How much would you donate to the fund to keep Coach Painter in in West Lafayette? Uh, probably about a mil or so. You know. What did you throw a mil in there? I didn't know you had a mil from wow. your overseas I days. I'd throw a million dollars out there to save Coach Painter at Purdue. No, I have- you could <laughs> sell the Larry Bird and Griffey and Jordan and Pippen jerseys behind them right. to, to raise some funds. The problem is I've already I've already went through this with Paint once when he almost left my fifth year. And I oh. literally was calling him every like two hours like, are you leaving? Why do I keep reading you are? And he was like, just be patient. What was that, Missouri or something like that? He was like, he was like, don't worry about it. I was, I was probably so annoying. I was bothering the hell out of him for sure. But I was like, dude, Etwan Juwan just left. You can't leave too. Like this would be terrible. You would have transferred. I would have. I was. If he would have left, I would have pieced. I was so mad. Where were you like, going? You would have uh, begged Kay to take you at Duke. I have no. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea where I would have went. But I was so mad because they couldn't. Have, you know, Conzo Martin had just signed a deal at Tennessee. He wasn't coming. Right. And if Paint had left, unless it would have been Paul Lusk, I was really mad at Purdue for the way they handled it. I was I was pissed. So I don't know. I'm glad it didn't happen. That would have been a terrible situation. But my other pick for this one, and then we'll go, Rob. You give us give us yours. Dana Altman. Uh, Dana uh, Altman wants to get back to the Midwest. I've heard. Um, you know, can coach his ass off. We know. I, I don't know. I mean, I I just think. It, it, it can make some sense. That's all. He was, he was on my list of like coaches that don't really fit really any of these jobs, but like I you think want to put him on somewhere. Yeah, I want to put him on somewhere. He it, Willard was one of them. Painter was one of them. Altman's one of them. Uh, Mike White was one of them. I, you know, if he continues yeah. this way, I'm assuming. And then Shaka, who knows what's going to happen? Um, you know, I think he's obviously going to stick around Texas after this year. But like, I think those are kind of five coaches that I don't know if they fit any of these jobs in particular. But I mean. They're kind of that tier of like if something opens up, they're they've had consistent success for, you know, a long time. And I think they could get in the mix somewhere. By the way, Rob, the reason Chris Mack won't leave Louisville for Kansas is because his wife's from Louisville and there's no way in hell she'd let him leave. Yeah, I didn't know that. That's that's great. Learn something every day on this podcast. <laughs> Who, who's your who's your realistic pick for Kansas? Painter? I I said beer. I that's who I had down. Yeah. He's probably more of a swing for the fences. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, again, it depends on the scenario for these, right? For what you're taking over, I think it it, it really has a lot to do with whether a Chris Beard leaves Texas Tech. Even you know, you think it's it's ridiculous. How could he not go to Kansas, right? He's got to be to Texas Tech, man. He's, he's got to roll, there. and it fits him. Yep. It does fit him. Um, where I don't think you know, some guys don't want the attention at all. I don't think he's like that. I think he could handle it in, in Lawrence, Kansas. But I think he's he, he's more comfortable at a place like Lubbock where they're the underdog every single year. He thrives on that. He wants that rather than being out of blue blood. Totally I, about, dude, right? I have on like being the doubted team. That, yeah. That's total, that'd that be a different, different deal at Kansas. Right. Um, all right. Uh, my alma mater, Arizona. I got good ones here. I got good ones. You, 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 and Hummel do the exact opposite. He like plays down. He's like, I got terrible names. Here's yeah, what I'm throwing out. You're like, I've got the best names. This is who the AD is hiring. Mark it down. Throws yeah. out horseshit. Honestly, I don't understand why he's doing it. They should fire Dave Hickey, the athletic director at Arizona, and hire me to 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 make this yeah, happen. That's what they should do. I'm telling you, I got your, great. Your name was on my list, actually. That's good. That's good I'm good. telling you, I could raise money. I could hire coaches. I wouldn't have hired that football coach, that the Patriots quarterback coach. Look at what he did with Cam Newton this year. Come on. The hell are we hiring him for? If you know how to hire a football coach. Go hire the guy from San Jose State, Brennan. I've done my research. Go get Brennan. You see that dude? He was singing okay. after the locker room when go they won. Brennan. 
That's, that's your first day of the job. Yeah, go get Brennan. That's all you're going to say. You know who he is. Hey, you get him from San Jose State. He's coming to Tucson. Come on. All right. Go anyway, him. Arizona. I'm going to embarrass the two out of you on this one. I'm going to let you both go first. Who's up? No, I don't like that setup. You go first. Nope. You're going first. I'll go right, first. Yeah, I'll you go first. You go first. Swing for the fence, Mark Few. Keep him on the West Coast. He will say no, but that's the swing for the fence. Okay. And I like my actual realistic hire, Greg McDermott. Not bad. Not Thing bad. Is, with the way he plays offensively, I think he'd be down to go to a climate where he could play golf all the time. Yeah, it's close to Scottsdale. He, he wouldn't even be working. He would love He'd be it. playing golf every day. I, I'm but this, this this is another one like the Kansas one where there's going to be the caveat of what what are you taking over? Let's say it's a one year postseason ban here. All right. So my swing for the fence is actually the same as Kansas Beard. Um, okay. You know, a little bit different, but Southwest. I mean, he's recruited at least around there. Um, and then, so I was trying to back back when everything was going down with Sean. I try to. Think of who I wrote back then. I thought Mike Bray would have been a good hire then. I don't <laughs> think you can. I don't, I don't. I don't think that's the hire right now. No. Um, yeah. I actually. I don't. I don't know if I have a good one for this. I think Damon Stoudemire would be in the mix. Uh, again, depending on what you're taking over, I think a dark horse could be like a Miles Simon. Um, Miles Simon's an assistant with the Lakers now. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So I, th I think one of those two would would be my kind of dark horse would have some sort of internal momentum to, to get in the mix. All right. My, my swing for the fence is the Warriors are, are, are not looking good. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, They're not looking good. Belligerent pick of the year. They're not looking good. I'm going with the guy who, who bleeds. He bleeds red. He tweets out Bear Down. Steve Kerr. He's going to have nothing left. They're going to lose every game. They stink. Have you watched them? They stink. They're he could, done. He could go do TV, make a ton of money, and then literally get rehired in the NBA in a heartbeat. He wants to recruit. He wants, <laughs> wants no, he to want recruit. He doesn't want to recruit. No, but he'd be a hell of a recruiter. He would be good. Think never. about it. He he would. He'd get that program like elite level if he hired the right staff. All right, again, it's swing for the fences. I'm not saying you're, you say you're embarrass me and Hummel, and then you drop Steve Kerr. Worse no, that's not what I was embarrassing you. I actually have two good realistic hires that neither one of you have mentioned. What do you got? Okay, two really good ones. Number one, Mark Pope. That's I think a good he'd one. Be good. I think that's he'd be really, really good. good there. High energy, yeah. knows the West Coast. He'd be one A or one B for me. Damon would be in the mix too. And then I got another one that Borzella wrote a big story on. And Come I know in. you can't you can't hire an assistant coach I mean, when I made your head coach. That's I mean, bullshit. I'm going to hire Tommy Lloyd, who can go overseas and get big-time dudes over and over and over. He is the guy who's helped Bill Gonzaga, uh, goes out and recruits overseas. Look at Hummel. Hummel's laughing at me right so, now. Like, I, am, I can't even believe that you tried to hype this as you're knocking this out of the park, and then you come with this shit. Yeah. Yeah, big time, right? This is awful. <laughs> it's terrific. No. It's outside the box. I, Mark Pope is a really good hire. It really is. McDermott. The, the, my worry with McDermott is he's done it at the high major level and it didn't it didn't work recruiting at at that level against at Arizona. Are you, you, have to are you saying the Big East is not a high major conference? Is that what you're saying right here on this podcast? No, I'm saying most of the players he's gotten have not been uh, waging war with some of the other elite programs. That's all I'm saying. I mean, he's uh, perfect uh, at Creighton, and I, I think he knows that. I think he knows. He would never leave Creighton. He's got Bruce Rasmussen, one of the best ADs. It, it, they'd let him do whatever he wants there now. He's in the Big East. I just There's thought no his pressure. play would be good in the Pac-12, and I thought – It would. It yeah. would. Yeah, I, I. but I think, again, I think Pope would be great because of the way he plays, um, wide open. And, and, and to me, Tommy Lloyd would just get dudes. He would get overseas dudes, and not just, as, as Jeff knows, re transfers – he was the one who got Andrew Nemhard. Um, he gets a, most of those transfers uh, are Tommy Lloyd's guys. So, um, all right, last one. Mark Few is a coach here. What's that? Are you downplaying Mark Few's ability as a head coach here? I'm downplaying his ability to recruit. Wow. Because he doesn't like to recruit. He's got good not. 
Like Mark Few, they have to pull out of with his family uh, in July. Like he doesn't want to. He'll do it, but he doesn't want to do it. And I've heard stories, and I've never asked him this, whether it's true or not, but one of the stories I heard was he put all this time into Luke Ridnour years ago. Remember Luke Ridnour, McDonald's All-American out of Oregon, had a, had a hell of a career. And he put so much time in early on and didn't get him. And he was at every game, everywhere he went, all summer, all, you know, every day. And he didn't get him. And he said after that, he's like, I'm not doing that again. I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing that again. Um, so now, listen, it hasn't hurt him. Well, that's the thing. I, I honestly don't know a lot about like the recruiting side of this, but that's yeah. pretty shocking to hear. That he's not a good recruiter, but he has the players on his team. Not he's saying he's not a good recruiter. He's not like Izzo. He's not out there every single day. He'll pick his spots. Most of the stuff he'll do, a lot of it will be in the West Coast. He'll maybe come in for the Peach Jam for a few days and then get out where Izzo is out every single day, every day he can be out. Painter, I bet, is the same thing. I bet if you ask Painter, the last day he was not on the road, it was probably for a wedding of a player or something like that. But Mark Few... What would you guess, Jeff? He's out, I don't know, 50, 60% of the days? Mitt, that feels low. I mean, I don't know where he is I mean, all the day. I mean, like, fishing. he, does, he, does, he loves fishing. He does. Loves um, him fishing. He's got great balance. Give him credit. Like, he's I'm not the whole, I'm not on whole him. staff, I'm, the whole program's got unbelievable balance. Right. Like, there's no, like, get in the office at 7 a.m. and leave it at midnight. We're watching film until 1 a.m. There's none of that. Can I give you my favorite story when I was in Spokane? My favorite story is, so uh, I'm at practice. First time I'm there, I don't know, maybe seven, eight years ago. And uh, I'm watching practice, and he's in his, like, jorts running practice. Few is. And uh, practice ends, and literally he's like, come on, walk over here. And we walk to, like, the concourse, like, like maybe 50 feet over there, 50 feet, and – Two minutes after practice ends, he literally pours me a beer from the tap, and we're drinking a beer. Like, less than five minutes after practice ends, I'm like, this is the greatest thing ever. And, and you know, where you stay at the Davenport. I yep. check in at the hotel. You got beer waiting for you in the room. I'm like, this is the life. Like, it is the life, you know, what he's got against. Yeah, it's a nice, little, nice little town. I like it. He's never leaving. He's no. never, ever, ever, ever leaving. That's why like, I'm not sure. Like, I mean, like Tommy's been mentioned with Tommy Lloyd's been mentioned with other head coaching jobs. Like, a, I mean, he gets paid uh, like well, well, really well, and you know, like few. I mean, he loves being there. He loves. I mean, like economy. He's always said, like, you know, I want my family to to say, oh, they grew up a certain place. I don't want them living here four years, yep. living him three years. I want them to say, oh, I'm from Spokane. I grew up in Spokane. I had a childhood in Spokane. And he's like, it's just. I like it here and I don't, I don't feel the need to go bouncing around for head coaching jobs. All right. Uh, so again, uh, to recap, I don't even know where we were at. Uh, Doster's going to have to, to watch this whole thing through and take notes. Kentucky yet. We have we're totally Kentucky. went off the rails. I know we got Kentucky. We're, we're finishing with a bang here. We're finishing with a bang and, and uh, Kentucky, the, the, the final one. If, if Cal decides to go to the New York Knickerbockers, uh, which won't happen this year, but I think it could happen in a couple of years. I, I really do. I believe like that's the one thing with Leon Rose and World Wide West taking over New York. If they get like a Devin Booker or somebody like that, a guy that he knows he can build around, Booker in town, something. Then are you, are you saying Tibbs is not the long term answer for the Knicks? Uh, no. Although Julius Randle's been awesome so far. I love. I always liked Julius Randle way more than Wiggins. By the way, way more. Way you more. always like you didn't always like him. Always more. liked him since he were you at this year when they went head to head. Yeah, didn't he beat his ass? Wiggins put up like forty. Was it that against Parker? Or was no, that, that was right? against that, that was against Randall. Randall. probably yeah. against both of them. Anyway, right. anyway, all right, we're getting off topic here. Rob's <laughs> Rob's falling asleep soon. It's He's like done. He's finished. Past his bedtime. Actually, all right, Kentucky. Julius Randall reminded me of he plowed me in a game. I called for a block, and he planted me in the floor. In a preseason game in like Encino, California. It was awful, but keep going. Keep going. Keep going. He plowed me over. Uh, all right. Kentucky. Uh, Rob, go ahead. 
I hate my picks. Uh, <laughs> I said Billy Donovan. Yeah, that was that's what I had. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. We can agree on that one. Yeah, all three of us. There you go. Yep. But I went with Chris Holtman. I, I don't know. I, that's not. A good it's thing. actually good. He's from Lexington. You knew that, yeah. right? Or you, did you not know that? Uh, but that works out good. I just, yeah, no, that's that was my <laughs> third. That was my third name. He was not. He was, that was my oh, second man. name. That was my second name. I'm right. really surprised, Rob, that you missed on this one. I've got three names. Who, Patino? Nope. <laughs> no, nope, I did not say Rick going Red back Arbach. to Kentucky. That's coming back. Red uh, Arbach's coming back to Kentucky. Or Zeller, what do you got? Sean Miller. What? Uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> depending, I mean, this is all in a vacuum. It's not, we're not, it's not, this is not all six jobs opening at the same time. Like, if if things don't end a certain way in Arizona, I think okay. that he would be a logical choice for Kentucky. Him and Holman were my top two. And Beard was also on that list. Okay, I got two that you guys haven't mentioned. One is uh, a repeat of my Arizona pick, which is Mark Pope, who played at Kentucky. Steve Kerr? No, no. The, the other one the other one is actually a really good one. Okay. Actually, really, if you think about it, you're going to be like, this was really smart, Jeff. I like You've really outdone yourself with this one. All right? You ready? Scott Drew. Yeah. You both love it. Admit it. You both like it. Actually, it's it's surprising that he hasn't come up at all. Yeah, seriously. He's like, I mean, he's he he's been one of the best coaches in the country for like whatever amount of years, and we're talking about the biggest jobs in the sport. But like that, I mean, like I should have one hundred percent included him in that category I was talking about before right. with guys that don't really fit a certain job. Like he should be top of that list. Think about it. He he would yeah. embrace Lexington. They would embrace him because he is the happiest guy on earth. Now, eventually, if he didn't win, they'd run his ass right out of there. But but he can recruit. He's shown he can recruit, and he did it at Baylor. He has kind of shifted away from the Quincy totally. Millers and stuff of the world in past couple of years. But he's got two five-star kids coming in next year to Baylor. So he's he's back on the trail. He, he's won in, like, every way. He's won with big-time <laughs> players. He's won yep. with – developed he's one playing zone he's one playing man to man like he's he's a really good coach i that's a really for, for once your hype actually, that might be the best answer of of anything you've given so far i ended, I ended the podcast okay. with a bang how about that finally beautiful i had good picks steve kerr was a terrific pick rick patino steve kerr rick patino was a great pick i'm not saying he's going to be there for 20 years i don't care i just want him for the next five to make Syracuse great again. Oh my God. That's, That's what I want him to do. Up on that. Make Syracuse. Miller was hiring Sean Miller. He might get fired. I mean, Rick Patino. Rick, you're hiring Rick Patino. He'll get fired. He's back at Iona. Oh my God. You're hiring Steve Kerr. Yeah, well, I'd like Steve. To hire you hired Quinn Snyder. Like, yeah, Quinn Snyder. Dude, you had some horrible picks. I'm really disappointed. I had some phenomenal picks. You guys get some sleep. I had some phenomenal picks. Uh, it's way past Borzello's bedtime. The last time Jeff Borzello stayed up this late, 11.45 Borzello. When's the last time? Yesterday. Yesterday. For what? Fantasy football. Yeah, I think it was a Sunday night. What was the Sunday night game? I don't know, but you must have lost 13 of your 14 leagues. Bad. Bad. Unbelievable. I mean, that's yeah. bad. So I will say I'm alive in two Survivor Leagues heading into next week. That's really? – yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. That could salvage my entire fantasy year. Next year, next year, Hummel, we're, we're going to bring you into a different pool so Scott Martin won't get in trouble, whatever. We're going to keep him clean. But yeah. we'll bring you in another pool where you can, you can potentially win some money. And, oh, by the way, whoever finishes last – it's not going to be doing something. Is it's going to be a lot more humiliating, a lot more embarrassing uh, than chugging a beer every lap. I think it's I think it's funny to make them dress up in like a Masters caddy bib and caddy my club. It's good. We all play yeah. good punishment. It is good. I, I I would, I think I would make you dress up a lot worse though. I don't if you, but if you did that in like at like a Vegas golf course. Yeah. That, I mean that's. That's like torture. It's like 128 degrees, and you're wearing like full pants and the whole deal. That's brutal. No, what would be more brutal is making Hummel, you know, have to do it in like a speedo. That would something be something like that. Yeah, my, brother, my brother had a league where they were doing the loser had to go do stand up comedy. 
Oh, that would be good. Oof. That's, 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 that's tough. Karaoke for Hummel? Ooh, that would be tough, too. Although, right? I did win the rookie challenge of the Timberwolves karaoke. You did. Hey. A song that I probably couldn't sing anymore. Remix to Ignition by R. Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> you did. That's a legendary song, though. That's a great song. The words. So, yeah, it was good. They made you do that where? At, uh, in Mankato, Minnesota. Me, Shabazz Muhammad, and Gorgie Dang had to all sing karaoke. It was great. Where's Shabazz? Shabazz in China. He is? He's in China? Yeah, he's in China. I talked to him a few years ago. Um, he goes, I'm, I'm, see, I'm seeing this chat on the right-hand side for the first time the entire podcast. <laughs> I didn't know this was going on the entire time. <laughs> I, I looked like three quarters of the way through. I missed most of it. But I did see people calling you a dumbass for Sean Miller. Yeah, I'm seeing David give me a lot of credit for being alive and survivor. So I'm pretending that the other stuff never happened, and I'm just I'm just seeing it now. I love it. I can't wait. I can't wait till Doster clips out some of the some of the stuff from this. I love I love my man Stan Shock saying that I need to go call the Alaska Bible League. By the way, Sean Miller was not the worst pick on this this pod. No, not even close. Of course it was. Not even close. Who's worse? Steve Kerr, Quinn Snyder. No, they're <laughs> alone. You know, to Syracuse. Patino was the worst by far. Yeah, that was a, that was a pretty bad one. Oh, I'm gonna have to confer with some people on this one. That's fine. All right. Good night, boys. Thanks for uh, thanks for doing this, Borzella. We appreciate it. Thanks for uh, having me. We needed to bring you some entertainment after Michigan State certainly failed to do so tonight. I'm going to bed. All, All right. right. Good night, boys. Later. Later.